All right, great evening, everyone. My name is Tanisha Burke. I am your three-star director with Planet Marketing. And the reason why I'm doing this video is because as I have been doing one-on-ones with people, I find that I'm having the same kind of conversation. And so anytime I can identify a training need, I'm going to create um, a training video for it. So tonight we're going to talk about building rapport online and compressing time frames. And at the end of this presentation, I will open it up for Q&A. So if you have any questions um, as we go through this presentation, this training tonight, go ahead and just write them down. We will have Q&A tonight at the end. So today we're going to talk about a few things. This will be probably my most comprehensive training that I have ever done for Planet Marketing in the last eight years. But I promise you it's going to be packed full of everything that you need to get your business going. So today we're going to talk about three parts to creating your elevator pitch, which is extremely important. I'm finding that people um, are not they're missing opportunities to kind of peak people um, by not having an elevator pitch. We're gonna talk about making your running list with value. Um, it's not enough to just write down people's names on a list. You have to add value to your invitation. So we're gonna go over how to do that. I'm gonna provide you with some sample invites, um, some scripts that you can use and tweak. We're going to talk about uh, introduction messages, right? We're always being told to add new friends to your friends list, but what are you doing when you add them? <laughs> if you're just adding them to your friends list and you're not starting a conversation with them, then what are you doing, right? And then we have the existing friends and family intro. Um, group messages, things that you can post in groups to start engagement there. And then we're also going to talk about compressing time frames. I have a spin on the PS3 and creating your DMO, your daily method of operation. So we're going to start off with everyone writing their never again. Your never agains are the real why that you are making the sacrifice to build your business. And so a lot of times we ask people, well, what is your why for doing the business? And they typically give us a surface why. But by asking what your never agains are, this is how you get to the real never agains. So I want everyone right now to write down three things that you have gone through in your life that you are saying, never again will I be in that situation. So three of my never agains would be, never again will I position myself where another man or woman can control whether or not I feed my family. And this is because I've been targeted at a job uh, more than once. Number two, never again will I have my lights cut off on a Tuesday and cannot get them cut back on until Friday payday. And never again will I have my car repossessed. So I want everyone to write down your three never agains. Okay, now let's talk about your elevator pitch. Your elevator pitch is how you will respond when people ask you what you do. Now, when this happens, never, ever, ever, ever identify yourself as a travel agent or travel advisor. Never do that because that puts you in a box. There are so many ways that people make money in the industry of travel outside of being a travel advisor. Well, number one, you're also a planet marketing rep making money in the industry of travel, right? The bellhop who brings your luggage up to your room, they're making money in the industry of travel. The tour operator, the restaurant chef, right? The help, the front desk clerk, all of these people make money in the industry of travel. So you never ever wanna identify yourself as a travel advisor. So go ahead and type in the chat. Don't do that. <laughs> All right. So three parts to creating your elevator pitch. This elevator pitch will help you have the I can change your life conversation right from the beginning when you're prospecting. And that is so important because a lot of times people kind of lead with the travel conversation 
and then they end up with a lot of people who want to book travel when they really are looking for people who want to build and so you want to start having that i can change your life conversation right from the beginning so that you are attracting people that truly want a life change they want the time freedom they want the personal freedom they want the financial freedom they want to be able to leave a legacy for their family well if you're looking for hungry people like that then you must have the i can change your life conversation right from the beginning when you're prospecting so we're going to break this down into three easy parts so the first part of your elevator pitch is explaining what you do so what i say is i am a travel business owner and i help position people who want to earn extra income on the money making side of the travel industry now you can tweak this any way you want again i'm just showing giving you an example of ways that you can say it. This is what I say. Some people say I'm a travel executive. Some people might say I'm a marketing director. So, or I'm a marketing rep. Whatever you want to say, just do not say travel agent or travel advisor. You're saying that you help position people on the money making side of the travel industry. So immediately the person that you're speaking to, they're not thinking travel agent, they're actually curious because you didn't say travel agent. So they're thinking, huh, the money making side of the travel industry, how, well, what is that, right? Now, the part two, this is the most important part. This is your story, right? Stories sell, facts tell. People will buy into why you got started way before they buy into the business, right? And anybody can purchase a, an, an IntelliTravel business from any of you that are watching this video right now, right? But what's gonna make the prospect partner with you as opposed to the next Planet Marketing rep? It's your story. So my story would be, I got started eight years ago because never again will I position myself where another man or woman can control whether or not I feed my family and never again will I have my car repossess. Okay, so you want to include two of your never agains and we all have more than three, but I just had you write down three in the beginning, but we all have more than three and always make your never agains relatable to the person that you're speaking to. So if I'm speaking to someone who doesn't have children, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say, um, oh, I got started because I wanted to, you know, be that stay at home mom, right? I'm not going to say that. I would say I got started because I wanted to be able to do what I want to do when I want to do it, right? Because that person who doesn't have kids, they don't understand me wanting to be that stay at home mom. That's not relatable to them, right? But if I say, if I'm saying that I want that time freedom, I'm going to say, I want to be able to do what I want to do when I want to do it. This way that, you know, that Gen Z or who doesn't have any kids, they can relate to that, right? And then part three, this is the call to action. This is the question. Do you keep your options open in terms of making additional streams of income outside of your nine to five, right? And the reason why I say additional streams of income, because you don't want the person that you're speaking to, to think that you're saying, oh, you got to quit your job to come do this business. No, we're saying additional streams of income, right? All right. Now let's talk about creating your running list. So I want all of you to start a brand new sheet of paper. And if you don't have a list, we're going to start it right now together. Okay. Now, would you all agree that everyone could use some extra income during these economic times, right? Everybody, people are having to choose between groceries and putting gas in their car, right? Some people are having to forego their prescriptions because they need to buy groceries or, or, or pay their rent or pay their mortgage, right? So when you're making your list, and keep this in mind, this is what you're gonna be doing with your new business partner, right? So forget about the memory jogger. I tried the memory jogger, it didn't work for me. I had a bunch of names on my list and I couldn't do anything with it. And we're always told that we need to add value to our invitation, right? And so 
you want to look at how can this business benefit the person, right? How can it benefit them? And how it's going to benefit them is what you're gonna use to invite them. So everyone that you write on your list, you're gonna write their name down and next to their name, you're gonna put extra income because we're gonna make that uh, a goal for everybody, right? Because even the millionaires are looking for a way to make another million. The billionaires are looking for a way to make another billion, right? Even if someone just wants to make the extra income to give it away, okay? So everyone gets the extra income. But then you're gonna add one other reason for how this business could benefit them. So for example, if John Smith works two jobs, you're gonna write his name down, and then next to his name, you're gonna put extra income, works two jobs, right? If Kim loves to travel, you're gonna write her name down, put extra income, loves to travel. So I'm gonna give you all some triggers to help you with your list. So the first one, and as I'm doing this exercise, I want us to do it all together, I literally want you to write down the names of the people that pop in your mind, okay? So the first one, would you agree that anyone who works two jobs could benefit from this business? Absolutely, right? Because we can show them how by working this business that they can eventually quit that second job. So anyone that you know right now who is working two jobs, I want you to write their name down and you're gonna put extra income works two jobs. So go ahead and write those names down. All right, the next one, dissatisfied with their job. Would you agree that anyone who is dissatisfied with their job, they could benefit from this business opportunity? Absolutely, right? Because we can show them how they can start this business. And at some point, this business is gonna make more money than their job. And now if they wanna leave their job, they can. Right. And think about this. There are people who may love what they do, but they hate the commute. Write their name down. Right. There may be people who love what they do, but they really don't like their boss. Right. They may love what they do, but they don't like how much they're getting paid to do it. They may love what they do, but they keep getting looked over for a promotion. And we hear those people all the time saying those things. Those are the people that you want to put on your list. And again, next to their name, you're going to put extra income, dissatisfied with their job. Next trigger, self-employed. These are the independent contractors, the gig workers, the 1099. Guess what? They don't have a 401k. They are the magic in their business. If they stop doing, they stop eating. Literally, these people literally have to work until they die. There's no retirement plan. So who are these people? They're real estate agents, insurance brokers, those home daycare providers, those people who have their own home health care um, business. Um, they're your hairstylist, your barber. Um, go ahead and type in the chat if you can think of some other independent, your Uber drivers and Lyft, your DoorDash people, right? DJs, models, makeup artists, nails, nail techs, right? Designers. All of these people, they don't have um, photographers, right? They do not have a 401k. But through this business, through residual income, we can show them how now they can actually create a retirement plan. So write down anybody who you know who is self-employed. Uh, also, think about these people. The people who have brick and mortar businesses, they don't have a 401k either. Right. So anybody with a traditional business, unless you work for corporate America, you probably don't have a 401k retirement plan. So anyone, you know, who is self-employed, write their name down, put extra income and retirement plan. They're self-employed. They need that retirement plan. All right. Next trigger loves to travel. I know you probably have at least 10 people you can write down right now. Right. Who do you know who loves to travel? write their name down, put extra income, loves to travel. This business can absolutely benefit them. All right, next trigger, people who have children and grandchildren. Do you think they could benefit from a business that will allow them to leave a legacy for their family? Absolutely. So anyone you know who has children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, write their name down and put legacy. 
let's show them how they can truly leave a legacy for the ones that they love. Next trigger, fixed income, <laughs> right? Anybody who's on a fixed income, we can help show them how they can supplement their income, right? So think about the people, um, let's go with the baby boomers. Let's start with baby boomers, right? So baby boomers are anywhere from 60 to 78 years old, right? These are the ones that are now living on their social security and their retirement, and they need to supplement their income. So anyone you know who is a baby boomer, write their name down and next to their name, you're gonna put supplement retirement, right? They need that extra income to supplement their retirement. Then you have your people that are on disability. Could they benefit from this business opportunity? Absolutely. So anyone you know who's on disability, write their name down. Now, uh, here's a disclaimer about the people that are on disability. It's truly going to be a hit or miss with them because it really depends on whether or not they have a poverty mindset or an abundance mindset. There are some people who are on disability and let's say they're getting $1,200 a month. If they have a poverty mindset, they're not going to want to do this business because they don't want to make too much money where they lose that $1,200 a month, even though they are living check to check off of that $1,200. They just have that poverty mindset and unfortunately they're going to allow 1200 to stop them from making 12,000. It is what it is if they have that mindset. But then you have the people who have an abundance mindset. There may be someone who's used to making, you know, 60, 70, 80,000 a year, but then maybe they got di recently diagnosed with MS and now they can't work a traditional job and they're on disability. Those people tend to have more of an abundance mindset. And when they realize that they have a business opportunity that can help them far exceed what their disability check is bringing in and bring them back to what they were used to getting when they were working, they will be the ones that will take a look at this opportunity. So just know that the people on disability is going to be hit or miss. It is what it is. All right. Let's look at millennials and Gen Z, and I put them together. So we're talking anyone from age 18 to 43. 18 to 43 is gonna fall into millennials and Gen Z. What they want is time freedom and personal freedom. The millennials and Gen Z, they do not want to do what their parents and grandparents did, which is subscri subscribe to that 40, 40, 40, plan, which is working 40 hours a week for 40 years to retire on 40% of what they used to live 100% on. Millennial, millennials and Gen Z want to live their best life right now while earning a living, right? They don't want to hear, wait until you're 65 and now you can start living your best life when you can't stay up past eight o'clock anymore, right? When you can't see as well as you used to, when your knees hurt your back, or they're like, no, I'm young, I'm fit. I wanna live my best life right now, right? So they are going to be open to looking at this opportunity because we're gonna show them how they can live their best life right now. So anyone you know who is a millennial or a Gen Z, I want you to write their name down, put extra income, time freedom, and personal freedom. That is what they want. And then after that, there are two industries that are really, really good for this business. The first one is educators. We all know that anyone who is in education, they are highly underpaid. They are underpaid. So anyone that you know who is um, in education, you definitely want to write their name down, put extra income. Okay, and think about this. Teachers have the summers off. So what do they want to do in the summertime? They want to travel, right? And then you have medical field workers, right? They want time freedom. Typically, people that are in the medical field, they are working 12-hour shifts. Trust me, they have the $200, 60 bucks a month is not a big deal for them. But the problem is they don't have the time because they work 12-hour shifts. So anyone in the medical field, you're going to write their name down, put extra income and time freedom. All right. Now, 
based on that exercise so far, I want you to go ahead and type in the chat how many people have you added to your list, okay? And this is gonna be the exercise that you do with your new business partner, right? A lot of people are saying that, you know, they're having a hard time with retention, with keeping. They can bring the new business partners on, but they're having a hard time keeping them. Well, if you're telling them, go make a list, and you're not doing it with them, like I just did it with you, you're telling them, you're in business by yourself. And that's not what we tell new business partners. We always tell new business partners, you're in business for yourself, but not by yourself. So stop telling your business partners to go do, and instead say, let's do. And just like I did this exercise with all of you right now, this is how you should do it with your new business partners as well. All right, so now here is a sample script that you could use to invite people to your business launch. Now keep in mind, some people like scripts, some people hate scripts. A script is just to give you an idea of what the conversation should look like. If you think about Hollywood, when these actors get a script from the writer, they read it to understand what the writer wants to portray, but then when they go in, they audition for it, they're ad-libbing, they're, they're adding their own secret sauce to it. So please don't feel like you need to use this word for word. I would hope that you would kind of take this script and kind of tweak it so that it sounds natural for you. Now, the most important part about inviting someone to something is they need to hear your voice. Do not text and do not post an invitation. So you're either going to pick up the phone, dial their number, listen to it ring and talk to them. Or if you're gonna use social media because you don't have someone's phone number, use the voice memo. That makes all the difference in the world because there are a lot of scam accounts out there. And so the reason why some of you are not getting any responses is because the person that you're sending the message to thinks you got hacked. <laughs> you might even get a text from a family member saying, did you send me a message? <laughs> right? So please use the phone or use voice memo. You want people to hear the excitement of your voice and you want them to know that it's really you and you have not been hacked, okay? So here's an example. Hi, Kim, how are you? Listen, I don't have a lot of time, but I wanted to reach out to you real quick. I recently started a new business project because never again will I be in a position where I'm living check to check and never again will I have my car repossessed. I'm so excited about it and I'm making a list of people to invite to my private business launch on Sunday at 7 p.m. I'm only inviting a few of my close family and friends that could benefit from the information being shared. And Kim, I thought of you because I know you're working two jobs and you know two jobs are for two people. No one should have to work two jobs. And also, I know that you wanna be able to leave a legacy for your family. Can I count on you to attend? That is a sample business launch. Now, what's key in here, even though you can tweak this to make it whatever you want, the part where it says, I don't have a lot of time is very important because you don't want the person that you're inviting to start asking you a whole bunch of questions, especially if you're a new business partner, you just got started yesterday and they're gonna be like, well, what is it? Well, that, no, so when you say, I don't have a lot of time, they, they understand right now is not the time to ask you 50 questions, right? And then the next important part of the invitation is you sharing your never agains. Again, you're having that I can change your life conversation right from the beginning, because I promise you, while you're sharing your never agains, they're automatically thinking about their never agains, okay? Um, and then the next part is can benefit from the information being shared, right? So you're not just spamming people, you're personalizing it based on the information that you know about them, right? They may be someone who's about to get a divorce, 
right? So you can bring that up, right? They may have kids that are getting ready to go into college, right? That's expensive. You can bring that up, right? They may have an elderly uh, parent or um, you know, a child with special needs. Whatever you know about their situation, you're letting them know that you thought of them because you're aware of their situation and you feel like this could be a benefit to them. They can help. All right, let's look at another sample invitation, but this one is to a business webinar, right? We have webinars happening pretty much almost every day of the week. Again, very, very similar, almost exact to uh, the business launch, right? Listen, I don't have a lot of time, but I wanted to reach out to you real quick. I'm not sure if you're aware or not, but I'm a travel business owner and I help position people who want to earn extra income on the money making side of the travel industry. And I got started eight years ago because never again will I be in a position where I have an eviction notice on my door and never again will I have my car repossessed. My senior business partner, who is a top income earner in the company, will be sharing some information about it on Sunday at 7 p.m. And I thought of you because I know that as a hairstylist, you don't have a 401k or a retirement plan. And I figured you could use some extra income. Space is limited. Can I RSVP you to attend? Right? So again, this is kind of similar to the first one, but here's now where you're using that story. That's why I helped you come up with your elevator pitch because that becomes part of your invitation. And again, you're saying space is limited. And it is, right? <laughs> Just like we're maxed out tonight on this webinar, right? So space is limited. Can I RSVP you to attend? All right. How are you guys liking these scripts so far? Again, personalize them, you know, change up the words, but make sure you leave the meat in there so that you don't get caught up where people start asking you a lot of questions. And again, this is how you're going to personalize the invitation. All right, now let's talk about the friends. So how many of you, and just type in the chat, how many of you are adding new friends to your friends list on a regular basis, All right? Uh, Facebook specifically maxes out at 5,000 friends. So you wanna have thousands and thousands of friends and you should always uh, keep adding new friends to your friends list because if you only have, you know, a thousand people following you and you're posting and stuff, you're posting to the same people that are maybe not interested or not ready right now. But there are some people that are interested right now and they are ready right now. And so you wanna make sure that you're adding these people to your friends list. However, what are you doing after you send them a friend request and they request and they accept it? This is where you, this is, this is where you wanna introduce yourself to so that you start showing up on their timeline. So anytime you send someone a friend request and they accept it, the first thing you're gonna do, and even probably right before you send them the friend request, go ahead and comment and like something on their page, right? Go through their page, which you should be doing anyway before you're sending someone a friend request, right? You wanna make sure it's a real account, you don't see a whole bunch of Bitcoin stuff and other people posting on their account, make sure it's a legitimate account for someone. And then go ahead and comment and like a few of their things, then send them the friend request, okay? And then once they accept the friend request, now you can private message them with an intro message. So here's an example. Again, this is a script. You want to take it, add your secret sauce to it, right? Make it interesting. Hi, Michelle. Thanks for accepting my friend request. My name is Tanisha, and it's nice to be connected with you on here. I thought I'd take a moment to formally introduce myself. I'm a New York girl now living in a Florida world with my husband and son who just started high school. I'm a foodie who loves traveling, shopping, and spending time with my family. I'm also a full-time entrepreneur who helps people who want to earn extra income start their own home-based travel business. Click this link to learn more or to schedule an appointment, click this link. Tell me a little bit about you and what you do. Okay, so again, 
break it up. Never use one long paragraph because if it looks too wordy, people won't read it. But notice how I broke it up into four short paragraphs, right? Break it up. It makes it easier for people to read. They're more likely to read it. And even though I'm exposing them to the business by including the link to the big picture video, as well as the link to my calendar, it this script doesn't come off like that was my sole intention. Some of you are jumping in people's inbox and you're just going straight for the gusto. It's like you're saying, let me have your baby and you're not even dating them. <laughs> Right. So look at your neighbor and say, don't do that. Right. This is really coming off as I truly want to get to know you. But here's a little bit about me. Now tell me about you. Oh, by the way, this is what I do. If it's something you're interested, boom. OK, but the main thing is that call to action at the bottom. Tell me a little bit about you and what you do, because you want them to engage with you. Now, if you do not have an online calendar, you're missing out. You're missing out on opportunities for people to connect with you. I cannot tell you how many people have gotten on my calendar for more information about this business because I had my calendar link in the post. So if you do not have an online calendar to make it super, super easy for people to book time with you to discuss the business, you're missing out on potential business partners. And there are plenty of calendar apps that are free. Um, Calen Calendly, I could never say that. Calendly is one of them. Um, I used to use yukabook.me, that one's free. And all of these free apps also have paid versions that give you more features, but don't go spending money that you haven't made yet, right? I always started off with a free version, and then as I made more money, then I would upgrade to paid versions if I found benefit in it, okay? But everyone, I don't care if you just got started with your business last week, go ahead and establish an online calendar now because you can use that as part of your prospecting and your marketing. And then as you grow a team and you start doing three-way calls, now you're making it super easy for your team members to book three-way calls with you, to schedule one-on-ones with you, right? Nobody wants to spend all day texting you saying, hey, are you available for this? Like, who has time for that? Nobody, <laughs> all right? So let's keep it going. So this is for the new friends. And what's cool about this, you can use this on Facebook. You can use this on Instagram. You can use this on LinkedIn. You can use this on Nextdoor. You can use this on TikTok. Like it doesn't matter what social media platform you're using. You can use this new friends intro message. So as you can see on the bottom, I said, this is for your cold market that you want to now turn into your warm market. But let's talk about that warm market. These are your friends and family. They already know you and you think they know what you do. Oh, I've been in the business for three years. My cousins, they, they already know what I do. They're not interested. I promise you they don't know what you do. They may know you're involved in something having to do with travel, but do they know about the eight streams of income, the legacy, the weekly income, the monthly income, the the intelligent, do they know about all that? No, you're not that important. I promise you, you're not. Your family and friends are not going through your Facebook trying to see what you do. I promise you, they're not. Life is happening for everybody right now. And you will be surprised. The people closest to your own siblings really have no clue as to what you do. So here is a way for you to what I call go through the back door. This is where you're asking them for a referral because I already know what you're thinking. You're like, uh, my cousins, they're not business minded. My siblings, they're not business minded. You may be right, but they can be a bridge to other people. So this is how you can approach. And this is what I did when I started. This is how I approached my family members who I knew probably wouldn't be, or I assume, let me say that, I assume they would not be interested. Right. So, hey, cuz, how are you? I'm not sure if you're aware or not, but I'm a travel business owner and I help position people who want to earn extra income on the money making side of the travel industry. And I got started eight years ago because never again will I be maxed out on my credit cards and never again will I have my car repossessed. 
my business is growing and I'm now looking to expand in the Texas market. Who do you know in Texas that would be interested in earning some additional streams of income outside of their nine to five? Yeah, I like that, right? You're not, you're not going directly to them, but you're letting them know what you do, assuming that they did not know. You're sharing your never agains, which automatically they're now thinking about their never agains, their maxed out credit cards, right? The time they had to hide their car in the garage because the repo man was looking for it, right? But you're not saying you're looking for them. You're saying, who do you know? I'm expanding in your state, in your market. Who do you know that would be interested? And they may just come out and say, well, I'm interested. And that's what we would love, right? But if they don't, if they say, well, I really don't know anybody, just say no problem. If you know of anyone, please share this 11 minute video with them and just refer them to me. And then you just send them the big picture video and you keep it moving. And guess what? Because your friends and your family are nosy, they're going to watch the big picture video. And the one thing that I can say about this business opportunity is once people see it, they cannot unsee it. And so they may have seen, seen some of your posts before and assumed they knew what you did. But now that you sent them the big picture video, they're probably going to watch it. And the new big picture video is awesome. It's like they took all the good things from the preview and the peak videos and, and the convention stuff and put it all in this 11 minute video. So the new, if you have watched the uh, new big picture video and you love it, put some flames in the chat, but I absolutely love it. It is way better than the old one. So again, this is the one that you're gonna use for your warm market. These are your existing family and friends. These are the people that have been on your friends list for five years that y'all been going back and forth, liking and commenting on each other's stuff, but you just never had a conversation with them. This is a message that you can use for those people. All right. All right, now groups. I'm going to teach you how to work groups. How many of you are in more than 20 groups? Just type guilty in the chat if you are in more than 20 groups. I know I'm in more than 20 groups, right? But the thing is, nobody knows that you're in there. And you're missing an opportunity if you join a group, but you don't introduce yourself into the group. So what type of groups should you join? Let's talk about that first. Join groups that you personally are passionate about. If you love reading, join some book club groups. If you love cooking, join some cooking groups. If you love music, join some music groups. If you love gardening, join some gardening groups. If you love sports, join some sports groups. If you're into cigars, join some cigar groups. If you're into wine tasting, join some wine tasting groups. Avoid the travel groups because there's too many of us in there. Think outside of the box, okay? Avoid the travel groups. There's just too many people in there. Unless you're starting your own travel group, there could be some benefit to that. So when I was um, a few years ago, I had I was having my house built and I was joining a lot of decorating groups. I love decorating groups. So when you go to do your introduction into any of these groups, you want to make sure that two things specifically. Number one, you have a picture of yourself. You, really you, right? And number two, a picture related to what the group is about. So if you're joining some cigar groups, let's see you, you know, sitting, chilling with a cigar in your mouth, right? With your Hennessy on the side, if that's what you're into. Ladies, if you're joining some wine tasting groups, you know, have a, a picture of you with your favorite bottle of wine or something, right? If you're gardening, have a picture of you in working in your gardening or a picture of your gardening. But whatever the group is about, show a picture of you indulging in that group. So... Here's a group, a sample of a group message that I would do if I'm joining a, um, uh, a decorating group. So, hello divas, thanks for accepting me in the group. My name is Tanisha and I'm married with a son who just started high school. 
I'm a foodie who loves traveling, shopping, and spending time with my family. I'm also a full-time entrepreneur in the sexiest industry in the world. I just built a new home in Davenport, Florida. My decorating style is modern with a splash of glam. I travel a lot, so I'm looking for ways to incorporate things from my travels into my home design. I love to entertain and I'm looking forward to getting to know all of you and getting some ideas for my new home. Does anyone have a home bar? If so, please post your pictures. I need some inspiration. And then I have the picture of me, the new house, you know, showing a little bit of my decorating style. But this is going to get a lot of engagement because you're going to get a lot of people that say, oh, welcome to the group. Oh, welcome to the group. Oh, you're so pretty. Oh, my gosh. I love your wall unit. Oh, I got those same colors. Oh, those are the chairs. Where did you get this? Where did you get that? Oh, I got that. And then you're going to get someone who says, I'm curious, what's the sexiest industry in the world? I promise you that's what's going to happen because I did this a similar post to this as my house was being built. And one of the young ladies said, I'm curious. What is the sexiest industry in the world? That's why I did not say I'm a travel business owner or anything like that. No, I wanted to, to, um, to inspire curiosity and make them ask me what that is, right? And so the other key to this is any time that you do a post like this, first of all, be prepared because you're going to get a ton of people saying welcome to the group make sure you respond to every single person that comments in your post every single person and when someone does ask you know what is the sexiest industry in the world again you're going to respond on the post and now the admins can't kick you out because you didn't go looking for that someone asked a question that's different right and now you can say oh i'm a travel business owner and i help position people da, 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 da. and then you can say you know if this is something that you're interested in private message me and send me a friend request i will be happy to share the information and when you do that other people are going to see that post and they're going to say i'm interested i'm interested i'm interested i'm interested so that's what i'm saying whenever you do a post like this be prepared because they're going to blow up the post and you need to be able to respond to everyone. I did a post like this. I had like three people signed up off of the post and I was just working that post over several weeks. OK, so you guys like this. You're already getting some ideas going like, oh, yeah, I'm going to create my. So you do the picture, you do the post. Don't say exactly what you do. Kind of leave it vague to, to spark curiosity but make your post about whatever is in the group, okay? And then again, the most important part is the call to action on the bottom. You have to ask a question. That is how you're gonna get the engagement. All right, another thing that you can do in some groups that you're already in, you wanna find like-minded people. So again, go to Canva, create one of these, and man, you can share this in all of the groups. Well, maybe not all of the groups, but find some really cool groups with some really cool people in it. So here's one that I did. Hello, my name is Tanisha. I'm looking for some more girlfriends. I'm not the club friend anymore. I'm the brunch friend, the spa friend, the wine tasting friend. I'm the day trip for dinner and another city friend. I'm the chill on the lanai with cocktails, discussing ideas, I'm making money friend. I'm the grab your passport and let's hop on a plane friend. I'm in Central Florida, so if you live in the area and you vibe what I'm saying, send me a friend request, something like that, all right? Again, this can get you a lot of engagement. You're gonna get some people saying, yes, I'm the brunch friend. I live in Orlando, I live in Kissimmee. And then you can say, okay, friend request me, you know, let's be friends, let's set up something. And that's the other thing. When you're listing what you like to do, be prepared to do it, <laughs> okay? Don't say you the wine tasting friend and you don't like wine. Don't do that, right? Because now you can truly set up a wine tasting. Maybe you could tell everybody, hey, I'm gonna have a wine tasting at my house, right? Everybody bring your favorite bottle of wine and you know, let's, let's, let's do a meet and greet, right? Or you can say, let's meet for brunch at my favorite spot, First Watch, right? You can set up a time for y'all to go meet each other, 
right? If they say, oh yeah, I'm that passport friend. Well, guess what? You're an IntelliTravel agent. You better have a group trip set up so that you can invite them on it. This is how you can fill up those, um, those cabins on those cruise ships, right? Or fill out your group trip. So make sure you're being authentic about what you're saying you're looking for. Cause again, the whole key is to find like-minded people. And so because we are in the travel industry, definitely Im include the, I'm your, grab your passport and let's hop on the plane friend, right? Or I'm the, let's go on a cruise friend, or, you know, I'm, I'm the girl trip friend, whatever it is you wanna say. But this is yet another way to really incorporate your IntelliTravel business, get that side going. At the same way, get some like-minded people. Y'all like this? Uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, so now let's talk about compressing time frames. Very, very important. Instead of doing PS3, we're now gonna do P3S. That's what I've been training on, P3S. Because how many of you, you're peaking interest, you're showing a plan, but you can't get people to the three-way call? Just type guilty in the chat if you're still struggling to get people to the three-way call. I'm about to show you how to get people to the three-way call because we're gonna do that before we show the plan. Now, keep it simple. When someone expresses any type of interest in the business, I want you to get real familiar with saying this. I'm glad you're interested. When are you available to jump on a Zoom or a call with me? So we can, three things, discuss your goals. I could share some information with you and get your questions answered so you can decide if this is a good fit for you or not. I want you to practice this, say it over and over and over so that it comes off super easy, so that you're not stumbling over your words. This is in person, this is online, it doesn't matter. I'm glad you're interested. When are you available to jump on a Zoom or a call with me so we can discuss your goals? I can share some information with you and get your questions answered so you can decide if this is a good fit for you or not. Now, why did I include some of these things in here? Number one, we want to get to the three-way call. So this is going to help you get to the three-way call. Number two, we can discuss your goals. I cannot tell you how many times I've asked someone on a call, where do you want to be five years from now? And they said to me, wow, no one's ever asked me that. No one's ever asked me what I wanted before. I've had a lot of people say that. And so when they say, when you say, we can discuss your goals, it's really gonna touch them because you're showing them that you care about them and you're not just trying to sell them something. So we can discuss your goals. I can share some information with you and I'm gonna get your questions answered so you can decide. Again, when you say so you can decide if this is a good fit for you, you're putting the power to them where they feel like, oh, you're not gonna try to sell me something. This is just gonna be an informational discussion and that's what you want them to know i'm not trying to sell you anything i can't make you buy anything i just want to educate you on my business opportunity it may or may not be for you but we'll discuss your goals i'll share some information with you get your questions answered so you can decide if this is a good fit for you or not okay and then once the three-way has been scheduled you're going to say okay i have you scheduled for tuesday at 6 p.m I'm going to text you an 11 minute video right now. Watch it, write down any questions you have, and I'll be sure to get them answered on our appointment Tuesday night. And this is where you will now take your Planet Marketing mobile app and you're going to send them the big picture video because you already got their phone number. So for those of you who've been struggling, like how do I get their phone number? People are a little skeptical about giving me their phone number. If you do it like this, you won't have that problem. All right, y'all like this? This is good? So remember, no more PS3, just try it. P3S, P3S, peak interest, schedule that three-way call if they express interest, and then the very end, you're gonna show them the plan by sending, sending them the big picture at the end. All right, so now let's talk about creating your DMO, your daily method of operations, right? 
So number one, establish business hours. I cannot tell you how many people I'm speaking to and they don't have to and they don't no, have to mute the yourself. Oh. Admins, please. Establish business hours. So look at your schedule. Everyone should have a weekly planner. Everyone should have a weekly planner that has the times of the day. Whether you do 15 minute blocks or 30 minute blocks, but it should be, you know, 8. 8.30, 9.00, 9.30, or 15-minute blocks, however you do it. And then what you want to do with your planner is the first thing you're going to put on your planner is everything that is a non-negotiable for you. Your work schedule, um, you know, if you go to school, your school schedule, uh, time to cook, time to do laundry, time to do grocery shopping, time with your kids, your date night, church, your reading time, your meditation time, you put all of your non-negotiables on your weekly planner first. Then you'll be able to see where you have pockets of time to work your business. And you don't need eight hours a day to work your business, but it's that 15 minutes here. It's that 30 minutes there. And that is where you're going to fill it up with reaching out to people. So establish your business hours and ask yourself how many hours per week are you willing to commit to working your business, doing the income producing activities to grow it, meaning the P3S. And then you schedule those times on your weekly planner. So once you do that, you're gonna set a weekly goal for how many new conversations you will start each week and plan accordingly, right? Now, the new conversations, that's going to be this intro message that I just showed you what to do. So think of those, those of you who have uh, 4,000 friends on Facebook, guess what? As an example, you can say, I'm going to start 35 new conversations per week, right? Now, when I say plan accordingly, I mean on Sunday, have that list of who the 35 will be. Because it is so easy to get caught up, on, especially on Facebook, and you're just scrolling and lurking and trolling and you want your time on facebook to be income producing so sunday night tonight get your list of who these 35 people are going to be and then during the week when you have the 15 minutes here the 30 minutes there the hour there you're sending these e intro messages all right now if you're reaching out to 35 people a week there's a 50-50 chance that they're going to say, hey, I'm interested in that, right? So 35 people a week, that's 70, that's 140 people a month. So you telling me that if you expose 140 people a month, you're not going to find three or four people that want to join the business? I, I believe you will, right? So at least half of your weekly goal is going to end up in the three way if you're using the P3S system. So that means 18 of those should turn into three way calls, right? So you're going to do your intro messages. You're going to engage. You're going to start 35 new conversations per week. And we're saying at least half of those should turn in to a three way, right? So that's 18. So if by Sunday, comes and you've only scheduled 10, let's say three ways for the week, then guess what you need to increase the following week? Increase your new conversations, increase that number. Instead of 35, push to do 45. But the goal is to get, you know, these 18 and you want to get that going consistently. All right. So you just increase the number of conversations to start the following week. And I promise you, as you do this, because it's an easy, um, either you're cutting and pasting your message or I like using text replacement. So literally, if I start typing FB intro, my whole intro pops up because I'm using text replacement. If you don't know anything about text replacement, go to YouTube. And, and ask, how do I do text replacement with my phone? <laughs> and they will show you how to do it. But all of my different text replacements um, are for my intro messages. So I have one for brand new business, um, brand new friends that I find on Facebook. I have one for groups. 
I have one for the next door app. So I have, you know, different intro messages and I tweak them based on the social media platform that I'm working. All right. And we are at the end of the presentation. Does anyone have any questions? And I want to go through the chat. Um, I want to hear some, well, yeah, let's go to the questions and admins. If you can, if you see any questions, if you don't mind filtering those for me. Uh, Najla said, is this still with a third party? Yes. Yeah, so your three way that you're scheduling should be with a senior business partner. Any other questions? Teresa said you answered everything I could have asked. Okay, good. Let's talk about take uh, Samantha. I see your hand up. You can unmute yourself, Samantha. Okay, I'm sorry. I was like confused how to use this. <laughs> Um, yes, I just, I'm new. So like, I just started this maybe a, I think it might've been two months ago. Mm -hmm. Um, I love to travel. I was always, my grandmother has always been on us since we were young to travel. And I haven't been anywhere in over like 20 years. Um, and it's sad cause I love it. So when I did this, I was like so excited and I was like so many things coming at me at once, but I want to succeed in this just because of the fact that it's so exciting and there's like so many things that I already have like in my head that I want to do like I'm that excited so I'm can just confused about this part of am I doing both am I doing um booking as well as starting absolutely so it's really up to you Samantha um, everyone joins the business for a different reason, right? You paid your $200, you got both businesses, you should be trained on both businesses, but which side you focus on is really going to be determined for you. So like for me, when I got started eight years ago, Samantha, I was literally being targeted at my job and every day I went into work, I did not know if that day was going to be my last day. So I needed to make enough money to replace my corporate salary fast. I needed residual income. Booking travel was not gonna give me residual income because on the travel side, you book travel, you get paid, you don't book travel, you don't get paid. It's the planet marketing side that provides the residual income. Um, and so for my first few years, I just focused on the planet marketing side. Now, with that being said, I still kept my finger on the post of everything in teletravel. So I was a dream maker. I was a vacation builder. I had certifications with certain suppliers. I went to ITQ. I went to CLIA 360. I still kept my finger on everything and went through the training of everything in teletravel because that is the product that I was selling and I needed to be knowledgeable in that product. I just wasn't saying, hey, book with me, book with me, book with me. Instead, I was just posting like, did you know this about travel? And, you know, I may have shared my IntelliTravel website, but I wasn't really pushing the book with me. I was, I was promoting more, let me show you how you could book your own travel and earn some additional streams of income. So it really depends on what it is that you're looking for. Fast forward, Samantha, I've gotten my family out of harm's way financially, and now I work both sides of the business equally. So it's really about what is it that you want out of the business, but I will say, don't leave any money on the table. I would say to really try and work both businesses. Now, if you're someone who says, well, Tanisha, I don't have a lot of time to book travel because you know, in the beginning, when you're learning how to book travel, it, it takes a lot of time, right? So I would say maybe put together, plan to do, uh, you know, two or four group cruises a year and promote that as for the travel side, because cruises are the easiest things to book. They pay the highest commissions. So you can set up a cruise one time and then you're just pretty much collecting deposits for the cruise. If that's if you really want to focus on the marketing side more. 
that would be a good way to do it. So I hope that answered your question. That is, that is, I just wanted to say something right quick because you said exactly what I was talking about with my friend, actually. Because I was talking about her, about my plan that I wanted to do sort of like the group um, type planning because mm -hmm. I wanted to make steps. Because when I was doing the training, it, it basically was saying how you could possibly make what you need to make. I'm not busy. So, oh, <laughs> okay, busy. that's good. So, I'm like so ready. I just want to make sure that I'm, I want to do it right and I don't want to be slacking here because when there's so many things coming at you and somebody saying well you have to do this and you have to do that and then you have to come over here and then you have to do this and i'm like wait a minute okay hold on i'm just learning this right here let me do this right and then do that but i i want to do that marketing because i have a lot of people i mean a lot of people so that's why i was like let me let me let me pay attention here and write everything down so that I can focus on it. So, I mean, that was one of my good, that was one of my ideas was to do that. Re Excellent. Excellent. And Samantha, make sure you are in uh, the Passport to Your Success group on Facebook. Um, it is by the Ambassador Ann Jones. And you go to the guides section and there are eight guides. And all you have to do, Samantha, is work your way through each of the guides. And I promise you, by the time you complete all of the guides, you will know your IntelliTravel business forward, backwards, and sideways. It takes you step by step by step. You do it at your own pace, and you'll learn everything that you need to learn to be able to take your business and run with it. Appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Christine Jackson, I see your hand up. Great evening, Director Burke. Thank you so much for this training. You're welcome. Uh, my question goes back to the uh direct message the intro message so you're sending out the video or you without setting the three-way in that message without setting the three-way up the intro and, message and, yes yes because i'm just introducing myself it ain't really about the business i'm just kind of sneaking it in there and if they're okay, hungry and, and they're interested, they're going to let me know in their response. If they're not, they might just say something about their family or whatever. And I'm just going to leave it at that. They saw it. And like I said, once you see it, you don't unsee it. Okay. And do you, so do you add them to your prospect list in the Planet app after you do the intro? Or you just wait to see not if they necessary. come back to you? Only, only if they express some type of interest in the business do I add them to the app. Thank you. You're welcome. And see, the cool thing about the intro messages is they're friends with me on Facebook now. So I'm going to be showing up in their timeline. They're going to start seeing my posts, but now they'll feel more comfortable reaching out to me if they are interested because I introduced myself to them. It's not like they're my cold market now. They've now turned into my warm market. All right. Milan. Yes, good evening. Um, I actually have a few questions. Sure. So the, the first one, for the new friends intro, since we're including like our calendar in, in that intro, does that mean that we, we shouldn't follow up with them with like a, do you keep your options open, peak, you know, stuff like that? That, that was kind of already, well, it wasn't that it was already in there. You're putting the ball in their court without you being pushy. So the way I kind of wrote that script out, it really makes it easy for them that if they truly are interested, they're going to respond that they're interested. They're, okay. It's just going to happen naturally. I literally signed up, not my last business partner, but the business partner before that, using that exact script on Nextdoor. I did my intro and her response was, I'm intrigued. I'm interested in this. This sounds good. You know, I'm a single mom and I, I take care of my elderly mother and, you know, and I was like, okay, when are you available to, you know, come by my house and I can share some information. I literally did P3S. She expressed, she expressed it. I introduced myself. She expressed interest. I scheduled the three way. She came to my house. I presented the business. I answered her questions. We discussed her goals. She signed up. Just okay. like that. Yeah. So, I have two more questions. Mm -hmm. And also think of this too. We're looking for hungry people. Yeah, I'll write that down. You're looking for the hungry people. 
You're looking for the willing, not people that you got to convince that they should do this business. You're looking for the people that are looking for you. So by putting this out there, if they're really looking for something, they're going to respond. And if they're not, then you don't need to say anything because now you're being a salesperson. You already put out there what you did. If it's not for them, it's not for them. This is not the convincing business. Okay. All right. What was your next question, Milan? The next question is earlier you said that um, we should use voice messages on social media so people don't think we're scammers. Yeah. So for for my cold market on social media, wouldn't you say that it would it would probably be good to do that as well? Use a like yeah, a voice anytime. message to introduce myself? Yeah, always use the voice memo as much as possible. I have okay. to get, even get used to it myself because I'm so used to typing and stuff. But man, the voice mem message is so much better and so much personal. It's like the next best thing to FaceTiming someone or doing a Zoom is using the voice memo because people can really hear the sincerity in your voice, the excitement, the highs and the lows. So if you speak monotone, work on that. Don't sound like you're delivering, you know, uh, 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 I don't know. What do you call those things when people die? A eulogy. Don't sound like, a, yeah. like you're delivering a eulogy when you're doing your voice memo. Matter of fact, when you're doing voice memo, don't sit down and don't lay down. Stand up because that will help you to, you know, have more um, energy and excitement in your voice. If you're laying down, you're going to literally sound like you've been dying <laughs> or you just woke up. All right. So stand up when you're doing the voice memo and that will help you to not have, you know, sound like you're giving a, a eulogy. OK, OK. I have just one more question. Yeah. Thank you so much, by the way. You're welcome. Um, my last question. So on social media, when when someone is interested and, you know, they express that to you and you're ready to send them the video, how do you get their number do you send them your number sometimes what i do is send them my number and say you know just send me a message but what's the best way to do that right so again when the the moment that they express interest you're going to say i'm so glad you're interested when are you available you know for a call or a zoom so that we can discuss your goals blah 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 and then they're going to say okay tuesday six o'clock okay here's my number what's your number so okay. i always give my number first and then I give them, I get their number. And again, okay. because they've asked for the information, they're not hesitant to give you the information that's needed to do business, All right? Makes now, sense. I personally, um, you guys know, I like to do Zooms for my three ways whenever it's possible. Um, sometimes it's not convenient to do a Zoom and that's okay. Um, so a phone call for me is gonna be the exception but primarily, I always do my three ways by Zoom um, because it is so you're going to have a better quality call if you do Zoom, because what you're not going to get Zoom is someone walking through Walmart with their bad baby kids screaming and they're trying to check out. No, when they know ahead of time it's a Zoom, they're typically if they're professionals, which is who we want to deal with, they're typically going to make sure that they're home you know, or in their, sometimes they're in their car, if they're, you know, on the road, but they're going to make sure they're in a place that is conducive to doing a Zoom call. So let them know ahead of time, you know, it's going to be via Zoom. Please make sure you're, and give them some direction. Some people maybe are not used to being on Zoom. So please give them some direction. Please make sure that you're, you know, you're in a quiet place. You have good lighting. I'm going to make sure I'm on camera so you can see that I'm a real person. I want to see that you're a real person as well, because we're talking about business. So, you know, educate people as well. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Samantha, do I see your hand up again? Or is that from before? Um, yeah, I just had a quick question because I literally, my thing shut down. What was the name of the group that you were telling me about? Passport mm -hmm. to Your Success. If someone could post the link in the chat to the Passport to Your Success group, that would be great. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. All right. Um, hey, Dr. Bird, I just wanted to say that the group six is started already, so she may have to wait for the next session. For what? Passport to success. 
the guides is always there for anybody. You're talking about the mentoring program. Oh, the mentorship. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anybody can do the guides. But thank you. Uh, Lenise, you said, can you share how to compress time frames while inviting to existing? What do you mean by that, Lenise? Because my, my way of compressing time frames is doing P3S as opposed to PS3. So before we would like peak interest, maybe by, you know, saying whatever. And then if the person expressed interest, then we might send them the preview ITA and preview rep to, you know, just to kind of give them a soft exposure to the business opportunity. But then we had to follow up with them to say, hey, after watching those preview videos, is this something you're interested in learning more about? And then if they said yes, then we scheduled the three way call. So it's like you had to go back and forth with them and that was taking a lot of time. So the compressing time frame is, hey, I'm piquing your interest. And if you say, yeah, I'm interested, I'm open. Great, when are you available to jump on a Zoom? And by the way, here's the video. So it's doing everything during that one conversation as opposed to peaking, sending previews, doing a follow-up, going back. Now I'm scheduling the three-way, like we're, we, we, we compressing time frames. We're gonna get everything done in that one call, that one conversation. So, so what I mean is, um, if we were inviting to a webinar, how would we do it? Oh, yes, yes, thank you. So anytime you, well, let me say this. Here's my disclosure. I close 99.9% .9 of my people with the videos. That's their first exposure for me. That's what I do. But I know a lot of you invite to the webinars and the webinars are great because then they get more meat and potatoes. So here's what you want to do. Anytime you invite someone to a webinar, once it's confirmed that they are going to attend, you're going to do two things. Number one, you're going to schedule the three-way at the same time you're inviting them to the webinar. Say, okay, I, you're going to get on the webinar tonight at seven. I want to schedule a follow-up with you because I know you're going to have some questions. Are you available You know, right after the webinar or do you want to do the follow-up tomorrow? But you want to follow up. You want to schedule that follow up, which is the three way within the next 24 hours. OK, so you're inviting them to the webinar. They say, yes, I'm going to attend the webinar. You're scheduling the three way so that you can get their questions answered. And here's the last part. You're sending them the big picture video as well. That is how we are compressing time frames. Because what if life happens and they don't make the webinar? How many of you have had people you've invited to the webinar, they said they were going to attend and they never make it? Now you got to chase them down. But if you schedule the three-way and send them the big picture video at the same time you're inviting them to the webinar, if they don't make the webinar, it doesn't matter because you've already exposed them with the big picture video and you already have them on a calendar for the three-way. That is how you're compressing time frames. Y'all got that? That one tweak makes all the difference. Always send them the big picture video when they say they're going to attend the webinar and schedule the three-way right then and there. Milan, I see your hand back up. Yes, when you do the P3S, mm -hmm. when you do that and the person, it's, it's the time for the three-way, but you find out that the person did not even watch the big picture video. Great question. Anytime you have a three-way scheduled, one hour before, you should be sending a text message as a reminder hey, just confirming our appointment at the top of the hour. Please make sure you have watched 100% of that 11 minute video I sent you and have your questions ready. So now Milan, they have a whole hour to watch the video. If they forgot, they have time to do it. If something came up and they can no longer keep the appointment, 
they're going to let you know. And this way you can let your senior business partner know, hey, you know, the appointment is scheduled. I need to, you know, they need to reschedule it. So as a professional, we always confirm one hour before and give them instruction. Just confirming the appointment we have at the top of the hour, 6 p.m. Please make sure you have watched 100% of the 11 minute video I sent you and have your questions ready. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Director Cage. Hey. Hi. So I saw, I don't have a question, but I saw a question in the chat. I don't think you addressed it. It was a really good question. Um, somebody said, I have a couple of people join the zone, but can't afford to pay to sign up through the loss of income of, or reduction of work hours. I think that's a good one because I've had quite a few uh, three ways myself and they, they don't have the money. They don't, it, you know, it's all kind of different scenarios. That. So I wanted you to kind of answer that and for Absolutely. those. That are- Absolutely. If someone doesn't have the $200, at that time, you just say, no problem, I understand. When do you think you'll be ready with your $200? And you just get a date from them, right? If they say, well, oh, I really don't know because now I got to find a new job, say, how about I follow up with you next month and see you know, where you are with the job situation and then we can you know, schedule a time from there. And usually they'll say, okay, that's fine. And keep them engaged, You know, keep inviting them to you know, the state of the planet or, you know, invite to go meet them at a weekly meeting somewhere, you know, keep them engaged, but you just keep moving that appointment on your calendar until they finally sign up. So they never fall between the cracks. And you also want to uh, make sure that you um, um, keep in touch with them, right? I had a young lady who, uh, she was all set to join with me and then the day we were going to sign up, some, you know, she said, oh, I can't do it. Something happened. And now I got to work all this overtime and stuff. I said, no problem. It's all good. And so the next few days, I would send her a good morning text just to say hi. Like, it's not I'm not just trying to get you in the business. I'm trying to build a relationship with you. Right. I want us to lock arms and get this money. And then I remember one of my good morning texts. She's like, I'm still coming. I just have to. And I said, no, 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 no. I said, I'm not texting you to ask you about the business. I just wanted to say good morning. And, you know, we're building a relationship. We're building a relationship. And and we, and we became really good friends. Like, she's so cool. Like, and she knows that I'm in it to help her. This was not just a one time transaction for me. We're building a relationship together. So you just kind of want to make sure that, you know, you keep in touch with these people. If you want to have retention, meaning retain the people that you're actually bringing in, you have got to build a relationship with them. You want to know their kid's name. You want to know what they do for a living. You want to you know, know the color of their carpet. You want them to know the color of your carpet in your living room. Either you go into them or they're coming to you, right? You, you got to build a strong enough relationship with them so that they don't quit, that they stick and stay. Sometimes people will stay at a place because of the customer service. Anybody ever go to a restaurant? The food is, it's all right, but you really go because you love the waiter or the waitress or the bartender. That's why you go. It's not, the food is not five star at all, right? You could go to other places to get better food, but it's the customer service. It's the smile. It's, that's why you keep going. But guess what? It's the same thing with this business. And I truly, a lot of times, believe that a lot of people quit don't quit the business they quit their sponsor or they quit their director real talk just say out your amen it's true people don't quit jobs they quit their bosses so become a better sponsor stop treating people like numbers care about people if you care about people they will stick and stay and you won't have so much of a rollback come the 28th we got to build deeper relationships with the people that we're doing business with. All right. Any other question? There's a, probably a ton of questions. Um, Vera said, how do we know if we are sharing the newest, the big picture video? I use the Planet Marketing app mostly. What they did was super smart this time. They left it the same exact link and just updated the video. So if you are sharing the big picture video from the mobile app, you are automatically sharing the most recent one. Great question. Uh, Shaniqua, I see your hand up. Hi, it's Nikki. I'm St. Hi, Croix. Nikki. Hi. <laughs> Hi. 
sorry. Um, my question is in the chat, but I'm not sure if you'll get to it. I just wanted to thank you so much for this training and thank you for, you know, um, stressing the point of relationship building and it not just being about numbers. Um, my question is when you were going over the DMO, the daily methods and weekly planning, setting a number for your business hours, um, you mentioned 35, like how did you come up with how many new people or new contacts we were supposed to reach out to? Great question. That's going to look different for everyone. Um, if I have a new person and let's say on average, there are, they say they could work the business about 20 hours a week, right? Which is typically part-time hours. In my mm -hmm. mind, Nikki, I'm thinking they should be able to start five conversations a day. Okay. Five isn't too much to ask. Like any new person... If I'm giving you the intro messages like I did tonight, right? How mm -hmm. many of you think that you could send that out five times in a day based on the hours that you're working the business? I think that's doable for anybody. And so as they get real comfortable with it, that's why I said, if at the end of the week, you only have 10 three-ways scheduled, then guess what would you need to increase the next week? Increase that 35, <laughs> Maybe add, make it, take it up to 45 maybe 55, but you're going to realize, especially if you're using text replacement and you're not physically typing out or, you know, or you're using the voice memo to just read it, you, you could do five in the morning before you even leave the bathroom. Yeah, <laughs> I that's said doable. leave the bathroom because y'all just like me, I know you go in the bathroom in the morning and you take your phone with you. I'm saying before you come out of the bathroom, you could have sent five voice memos introducing yourself just that quick you could do it on your 15 minute break at work you could probably get your five in yeah that's doable thank mm -hmm. you you're welcome barb said this training makes a lot more sense than my trainings after i signed up thank you you're welcome what is the recommended time of each of the 35 weekly conversation dr chen that's going to look different for everyone some people have kids some people don't you know, some people work a job, some people don't. Some people work two jobs, some people don't. Some people, you know, have a job and they go to school. Again, this is why you have to have business hours, right? Business hours. And if you're sending these voice memo through Messenger, guess what? Everyone knows that Messenger is, you know, you're expected to answer it whenever it's convenient for you, not at a certain time. So if you're that late, uh, that night owl that's up at one, two in the morning, Guess what? You could be messaging the people on the West Coast. Right? Because we're, again, we're not just in, you know, East Coast. We're, we're all over. So leverage, um, you know, these different markets for that as well. All right. Anybody have a question that I did not see? Please raise your hand because there's just so many things in the chat. Or admins, if you see a question that I did not get to. Director Bryce, I have a question. Hey, Sharice. My question is, what is your uh, recommendation on keeping track with all of this? This is some good information. And to be honest with you, I was in the middle of a boot camp. And what you provided today is a summary of what has been you know, issue week by week by week. And I'm like, she's all in my notes. She's giving me everything that I need. It's like a summary of the boot camp that I was in. So I know that it's right on point, but I just wanted to know uh, with you, what will be your tracking system? So I would suggest a spreadsheet. And here's why. It's going to be more flexible because if you really, really, really going to drill down and work your list, you would want to have a column that's going to have, of course, the name of the person. You're going to want to have a column that has the date that you met them, where you met them, what city and state they live in, and then a note section, and then maybe another column for the sign up or the follow up date. And the reason why I said, say that, Sharice, is let's say you are on a cruise, like I was on a cruise recently, 
and I met two young ladies. One of them lives in Texas. The other one lives in Georgia. So on my spreadsheet, right, I can have where they're listed. And then guess what? I can invite them to, hey, we got a meeting coming up on Tuesday in Atlanta. Can you make that meeting? Oh, hey, we got a meeting happening in Dallas. Can you make that? So I kind of like to know where they live. Not only that, as you grow your business, and especially in your hitting director level and goal builder and 2020 DIT, you know you got to crisscross the planet, right? You can't just build from your computer. So if I'm going to go to Dallas or Houston, I want to be able to go back to my spreadsheet and sort it and say, who can I reach out to, um, you know, that's in that market? So if you're kind of writing it on a piece of paper, you're going to have to be flipping through pages trying to find, okay, who's in Texas, who's in Dallas, who's in... But if you do it on a spreadsheet electronically, number one, if it's in the cloud, you can always access it no matter where you are. You could be sitting at the airport on your way to Atlanta and say, ooh, who can I reach out in Atlanta? Let them know I'm coming. Not, oh, I left my, my list at home. <laughs> Does that make sense, Cherise? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. And I'm sure there's probably an app for that. I know Director Tamika Smith um, had mentioned some type of app that is like good for network marketing that kind of allows you to do that, track your list and stuff. Um, but, you know, again, good old fashioned Excel <laughs> or numbers. If you are an Apple user, you can do the same thing. Just make sure whatever you use, you you save it to the cloud. So if your phone ends up in the toilet, you can grab your iPad and still pick it up or your Google Docs or something like that. This is an online business and you just wanna make sure that no matter where you are in the world, you have access um, to your list and your logins and passwords because you might be visiting someone in another state and someone saying, oh, I was just about to book my trip to Jamaica. You don't wanna say, oh, well, when I get home and I can find my login to Vacation Express, I'll be able to book your trip. You wanna be like, hold on, let me and handle it right then and there. Any other questions? Again, if I didn't see your question, please raise your hand or come off of mute. I have a question. Yes. Could you just repeat the different columns we should create in our spreadsheet? That's got me Absolutely. for a long time. Absolutely. So a name, the name of the person, the date that you met them, of course, their contact information, like, you know, their either their, their phone number, um, where you met them, right? So I have some people I met on LinkedIn. I want them to be able to make a note. Oh, I met this one on LinkedIn. I met this one on Facebook. I met this one on TikTok. Um, the city and state that they live in. A note section. So you can put, oh, this one was a single mom or this one works at Amazon or this one. And then a follow up and a sign up column so that you can, you know, schedule them for the follow up. And if they do sign up, you want to be able to track how many people from your list have you actually signed up? Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else have any other questions? Go ahead and unmute yourself or raise your hand. All right, I want to hear about takeaways. This was a very comprehensive uh, training. I told you it would be. I said that this would probably be the best training that I've done in my eight years. And y'all who have been following me for a while know I do a ton of different training videos. But I want to hear from five of you, and you could type it in the chat. What did you hear tonight that was your biggest takeaway that you know is going to be a game changer for your business? And you could come off mute. Who wants to go first? Norma? Hi, Director Burke. Hi, everyone. Good evening, all. Thank you so much, Director Burke. I, I really knew you were going to bring it because you always bring something great whenever you train us. So um, I like the list that you talked about, the millennial, the Gen Z, the Gen X. Mm -hmm. I like how you break it down, how to um, reach out to them and how to get the business through them. And of course, you always upgrade and update. And I love it. 
Thank you so much for thinking of us because you don't have to. So we appreciate you. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Norma. Pamela? Oh, oh sorry. Thank you, Mr. Um, Director Burke. I, I, really, oh, I really enjoyed this um, information. And my takeaway for this one was um, when you said never just start off being a trap, tell them that you're a travel agent because it puts you in a box. Well, I came in and I only worked the building side. I haven't really triggered on the travel side because I'm not a traveler. I, not yet, though, but I, I desire to build. So some of the things that you were saying, I've already were doing from the very beginning. I was told to do those things, but you just reiterated it. And I'm just going to keep on doing those things. And I thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Anybody else? You're welcome. Hi, Director Burke. This is Myla. Hey, Myla. How are you? Hi. I'm doing great. So I follow you on Lifestyle by Tanisha on YouTube, and I watch your videos. But this evening helped me to put it all in one place. And I'm hopeful that you'll share the PowerPoint with us, maybe, so we could copy those scripts out. Um, and I know we've had our one-on-one -on -one conversations about how to make this happen. And just from meeting with you one-on-one -on -one and then employing that, it has helped me tremendously. So I think all of these different scripts and approaches help because I think sometimes we get stuck with not wanting to get banned on Facebook or not wanting to do it incorrectly that we get frozen. Right. So this kind of helps us learn how to do it the correct way so we don't get blocked on Facebook or anything like that and still be professional about it. So right. thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Myla. Uh, someone else put, I'm going to go to the chat. Uh, the aha moment was script. I, I like yes. to say something. Yes, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, this is Nikita. And I just want to say that I really like the group introduction because I find myself speaking and starting conversations in groups, but I don't ever get anyone to respond when I take it from groups to message and then privately. So I really like the group message. Awesome. Awesome. Yep. I got some sign ups from that. Did I see your hand up, Teresa? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Director Burke. Uh, there is so many things that I got from tonight. It's like, I, but I don't want to go through your entire presentation all over again, you know, because there were so many things, but I really loved the scripts and I screenshotted them so that I could go back through and, and maybe print them off and, you know, write them and rewrite them in my own words. Like you said, just kind of tweak them for my own benefit. Um, I really like the lists. I've made lists of people, but the way you presented them in each category was something that I really hadn't thought about in each aspect like that. So that was really good. I love the P3S because I have been definitely struggling with getting people in those calls. Um, we've talked about that before and uh, my upline is doing better with that, but it's still something difficult for me to get those people. So definitely I like that. And then introducing myself via voice. I'm in a lot of groups and I've talked to people, you know, and but like you said, um, putting my voice out there and introducing myself via my voice and messages and um, just talking to people is going to be beneficial for me. I, I really believe that. Thank you so much for everything tonight. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Anybody else? Uh, Cedric. How are you? Hey, Director Burks. I am wonderful. Hey, this was, this was also, I um, wanted to reiterate that the information that you provided today was um, great. Um, just basically using your voice instead of just texting them, just kind of hard texting them. Uh, that's some great information as well, because you're right. So many people are thinking spam people are out there as well. Um, so you definitely want to uh get your information out and you know be real with the person as well and then to um you know shout out to all the guys that are on here as well awesome yeah shout out to the guys because we know the women are dominating planet marketing thank you so much lanice my um biggest takeaway this evening was asking the friends for referrals because sometimes because it also creates curiosity yes. so asking them that way makes them want to ask you for more information too. So I appreciated that. Exactly, exactly. You're welcome. Shamika, I love all these takeaways. I love that. My, 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 my prayer was to make a difference in your business tonight. 
So hearing these takeaways really confirmed that for me. Shamika? Uh, my biggest takeaway was the elevator pitch and being able to put pieces of your story inside of it because I I agree with you. I can think about a whole bunch of times where it was missed times where I could have said something and just kind of like stumbled over my words a little bit. So I appreciate, you know, incorporating those never again because that can really hit home with people and to have those, I can change your life conversations. So that was my biggest takeaway, um, something that I can implement immediately. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. You're welcome. And, and through that, you're going to find builders and not just bookers. So that's the other part of that. Sharice? I just want to say my takeaway from this is building a genuine uh, relationship with people. Sometimes we can take them in the business and we have no idea who they are their mentality, what they're going through, but building those genuine relationships, even up front before they sign up, it helps uh, build that bridge of an open line communication of when something is going on with them, there is easier to have that conversation with them or know what they're, they're open uh, to talk to you with their struggles. And it can be something where you can actually help them in that professional development of a book that you read or a scenario of a director that has been through it and that's their testimony. So that line of communication, that popped out to me, like steady having those conversations with them. And it just reminded me to go back and reach out to some people who are very faithful in paying their monthly um, you know, payments, but build that relationship up with them. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Amanda? Yes. Um, I was wondering if you could share some of those scripts so I can role play with some of my team to get them comfortable with using the scripts and then becoming genuine. There was quite a few takeaways <laughs> from it to work both sides. And um, I couldn't get into later, but I like that you presented the DMO because when I talk about it, some of the team didn't understand it and you did a really good job at that. Okay. But, um, I would just like to role play with my team and try to get them out there and call a play and they know what play I'm calling and what script to use. Absolutely. So what I will do is this is being recorded as soon as we finish the Q&A. I am going to upload it to my YouTube channel. I will also share the links in our Team Lux Platinum. And uh, tomorrow I may just screenshot just some of the scripts and put those in a post in our Team Lux as well. But everybody will have access to the video through my YouTube channel and through our Team Lux Platinum group. So you can go back and watch it and pause it and take notes as well and share it with your team members that couldn't make it. Miss April Potter. Hey, April. Hi, Director Burt. Thank you so much for this training. Um, it was absolutely amazing. Um, the never again really hit me and how to incorporate that into everything that we're talking to our prospects about. And the other thing that really hit me was the online calendar. I don't think I realized how much, like you said, I was missing out on because I don't have that. And it's a free app. So there's no reason why I shouldn't. So exactly. thank you for sharing that. And um, the text now too, like where it creates the text for you, time saving um, things. So yes, this uh, training was great. Thank you, director. You're welcome. Thank you for sharing. Amira. Hi, I just unmuted. I'm sorry. Hi. So first of all, you look fantastic. And thank you so much for the training. Um, you always do what you do. So, you know, you're like my favorite trainer in the business. Like, I love it. So, um, but I had a, um, when you were talking about just the, the, the conversation part, um, what, what stood out to me it was something that I do also. So I kind of want to add to that. Something that I do also when you're talking to people and you build these relationships and talking to them, it's a regular thing to say, like, um, when they, hey, what are you doing right now? Well, you know, they'll say what they're doing or whatever. It's nothing wrong with you saying, I'm working on this for my team. 
or I'm working on this quote for Costa Rica, or I'm working on this quote for this, I'm doing this. And it, it pulls people into like, oh, well, what do you, like, what do you mean? Like, there's a little bit more to that. Mm -hmm. Just found this dope quote for my client. I'm so excited to send this to them right now. You know, I just found this awesome training for my team for this. And I'm doing this right now. I had this great idea. So don't be afraid. I just want to reiterate, like, don't be afraid to share what you're, because people talk about their work all the time. They do. There's nothing wrong with you talking about your work too. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to kind of add on to that and just say, like, there's nothing wrong with that. Don't be embarrassed by sharing what it is that you do too, just because you are in network marketing or in the travel business. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with sharing that. People talk about their jobs all the time. Yep. All the time. There's nothing in a negative wrong way. You. you get to say something In positive. a negative way, right. right. So now you're excited. You're proud. Like this is, I just got this bomb commission check. I just got this, I just got all, signed this, all, this, this team member that I'm super excited about. I just found out this quote, this deal that I didn't even think I was going to find for myself. I might hop onto that. You know, like you can do all those things and be excited. Just the same way people talk about their jobs. So I just wanted to kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm appreciative of what you shared, but I, I just wanted to piggyback off of that and just say that part. Thank you for sharing that. Stormy? Hi, good evening, everyone. Coach, my takeaway and something I'd like to share with some of the new people. It is, it's ingenious, the P3S. I tried it. You don't understand. That actually takes out all of the opportunity and time for your prospect to badger you to death about what's this about. You don't want to have them feeling like you're ignoring them. So people, especially the newbies, they start talking too much. And those are usually the prospects that will ghost the three-way. Mm -hmm. because you've ended up saying something before the expert had a chance and putting the expert in front of what they're about to see. The re you know, yes, thank you, ingenious. Thank you. That's why you my coach. <laughs> I have a quick question about what she just stated. So I, I wore my T-shirt today and someone asked me, how can you change my life? And I said, well, do you have a moment? Um, if you can give me your name and number, I'll be happy to share something with you. Was well, that the right thing to say? Or what would you say to somebody that you meet on the street that ask you a question related to the T-shirt? I go back to the elevator pitch. That's why I taught y'all the elevator pitch, because that's the perfect response of how you can change your, their life. I'm a travel business owner and I help people like you who want to, you know, earn extra income, position themselves on the money making side of the travel industry. And I got started X amount ago because blah, 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 because never again this and never again that, um, you know, what's your number and I'll send you, I'll be happy to send you some information and we can schedule a time to talk about your, your goals, you know, um, share some information with you and get your questions answered so that you can decide if this is a good fit for you or not. Master that elevator pitch where it just rolls. So you don't even think about it, Nikki. It'll just automatically just flow so easy. You won't have to think about it. But I love that you bought the shirt. I have them in like four different colors. And anybody who bought that shirt from convention, again, if you're going to wear that shirt, you better have that elevator pitch ready because someone will ask you, how can you change my life? And you want to just say it like, Oh, yes, this is my week in uniform. My sister and I, I must have bought the, cut the place out. But yes, it's my uniform now. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Good job. Samantha, I see your hand up. Um, yeah, I just wanted, because somebody just said the calendar thing, and I completely forgot. Um, yes, I usually have my planner, but I totally got blindsided because I have a computer and did not use my online uh, planner, which when I was working with kids, I usually had one. So I haven't done that in a while. So I'm like, okay, this is new because they've come out with so many new things. So I'm very grateful for what you came out there and said about that because that definitely was the first thing I did when you said it was going on the computer and get my calendar and start setting that up because I, I know me 
And when I have a lot of things happening at once, I forget something. Mm -hmm. And when I have my calendar, it's so much lighter and better for me to stay organized. So I really do. You have no idea how I appreciate that. Oh, really you're do. welcome. You're welcome. And have different types, of, have different appointment types on your calendar. So once you kind of get to a paid version, a lot of times they'll allow you to have different types of appointments. So maybe you have as you know, you become a goal builder and you're doing three way calls for your team, you have an appointment type called three way call. Right. Yeah. But then okay. you may have a different appointment type for your posts that you're marketing. Like I have an appointment type that says request for more information. That's a totally different appointment type. Then I have a different appointment type for one on one coaching. I even have another appointment type for vacation planning so that when I do posts in my travel group and someone's interested in me booking a trip, I can send them the link to schedule a time for us to discuss their vacation. So think ahead. You may, you may be a team of just one right now, but you want to plan ahead to when you have a team of 100, 300, 500, 1,000. If you put those things in place now, it'll just make everything so much easier for you as you grow your organization. Josephine? Thank you. You're welcome. And Director Berg, thank you. Thank you so much for this amazing um, training. Of course, it's a refresher for me. But one thing that I do love um, is the fact that I need to engage more on social media, which I do, but the way you positioned it, whereas I engage first and then send a friend request, I was doing the opposite. And that will also help with algorithm as well. And another thing, um, I love the way you categorize in terms of our list. Mm -hmm. um, I do use the memory jogger from time to time, but the way you did it tonight was absolutely amazing. And I will definitely work on that. But thank uh, you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, everyone. Well, this concludes the training. I don't think I need to do any more trainings. This was the training of all trainings. I want to thank you all for supporting. Immediately after this, I am going to, it's going to take a while to download. I will then upload, share the link in our groups and chats and things. And then I'll also screenshot the scripts for you all and do a post with just the scripts. Okay. So thank you, everyone. Go be great. Let's make October strong, strong, strong. Like I want y'all to hit it hard with these scripts the month of October, because you already know come November and December, things slow down. People go on the holidays. They're thinking about you know Thanksgiving and Christmas. If y'all hit it hard in November, everybody can go gold builder in, in, in October. Hit it hard in October and go gold again in the month of October. And I'll see you all at the beach and at the bank. Have a great night, everyone.